Hi you guys, welcome back. Today we have a video that's kind of different but similar to our usual content because ever since we announced that I'm pregnant or having a baby, a lot of you guys posted in the comments of that video that we kind of give you hope, you've been wanting this for so long, you think you're too old, you think by the time your loved one is home that it might not work for you. So I brought the master manifester so he can give us some tips on how he has manifested some of the most beautiful, seemingly impossible things into his life, our life together. Are you ready? Absolutely. Okay, take it away. For me, the law of attraction is really about manifesting whatever it is you truly, deeply desire and want most in your life. And for me, I've expressed this before, it was when I identified that my deepest desire, what was driving so many of the things in my past that led me in a negative direction, it was my need to be loved. And it was very difficult for me to, to acknowledge that and come to terms with that and really to take ownership, responsibility for it. So before I was able to manifest everything that I wanted, before I was able to bring our relationship to life, I had to get rid of all of the things that were keeping me from having that. All of the toxic, unhealthy energy, vampires, people, and things that were just, that were stealing my joy, that were moving me in a different direction. So that's number one. Key to a successful law of attraction, to bringing, to manifesting what you truly want, is first and foremost, you gotta make space. Mm -hmm. You have to get rid of those things that are not serving you, that are not speaking to whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. For me, that was unhealthy relationships. Also, that could be both figuratively, but literally as you move forward in your life and decide what it is you wanna manifest. So for example, when I was waiting for Adam to come home and we didn't know if or when he would ever be awarded that opportunity, I literally, I'm glad you're sitting down, you're not gonna fall down, made space for him in my closet. I cleaned mm -hmm. out a drawer. And so you're putting out there in a physical sense mm -hmm. what you want to happen. Make space in the bed for him, that type of thing. So number one, first and foremost, you've gotta make space. You've got to eliminate those toxic relationships, people, places, things that are keeping you from manifesting what it is you really want. For me, those were relationships. And being in prison, the last thing you wanna do is cut off anyone on the outside who's there for you in any manner. Even though I knew that these relationships were not healthy, hadn't been healthy for a long time, that was probably the hardest thing that I ever had to do up to that point, mm -hmm. was to tell those people, and it wasn't just one person, it was a couple of different people and I had to tell them, I just can't have you in my life anymore. You know, I want what's best for you. You need to move forward with your life and I need to move in a different direction. I have had invested at that point all sorts of time and energy into my personal health, well-being, finding out who I was, my physical health and well-being, you know, working out, eating healthy. And I was moving in a certain direction and I realized that these relationships, these people weren't living the way that I wanted to live. They didn't have the same values. So by making that space, honestly, man, I felt so much better. Like I felt a sense of freedom. Like I was truly liberated. It was like I could breathe free for the first time in a long time. And as difficult as that was, I know it was absolutely necessary. Our relationship never would have happened had I not been able to do that first. It makes sense too, because you refer to them so beautifully as energy vampires where they're sucking your energy yeah. and you don't realize it at in the moment when you have those people like that around you. And even if you have glimmers of, oh, she drains me, he drains me, you kind of put it out of your head. So the fact that you did get rid of those people as awful as it was, and then you said you felt this big weight lifted makes complete sense. And you felt that energy come back into your life. They were no longer sucking it out of you. Well put. So that was the first step. Second step, and this was a little bit more challenging. I had to, to sit down 
And as we've talked about before, listen, anytime uh, you want to bring something to, to life, whether it's a goal, whether it's a, a, a law of attraction, you want to manifest something, man, you have to write it down. Literally. Literally write it down. And I know that sa- that sounds like so simplistic and you're like, well, what's the difference? Do I really need to write this down? If it's in my head, that's enough. It's not enough. You have to put it on paper. It's the process of writing it down. You bring it to life. To see it on paper is to begin to bring it to life. So that's what I had to do first. I started making a list. I said, ideally, I know that my previous relationship, romantic relationship was not healthy. I've never had a healthy relationship in that regard before. Now I'm at a place where I'm personally healthy. Man, what would my ideal partner look like? Who would be on the same page with me? And full disclosure here, I was so shallow in my younger days. My relationships were based on appearance solely, right? And if there was anything else there, like if we connected on a different level, it was like, wow, you know, we're kind of, we have some same interests, but I was extremely shallow. I mean, I'm just being completely honest with you, right? And I didn't want to be that person anymore. Mm. So I had to be very intentional about that. I said, I'm, I'm not going to worry about looks. It's not about appearance. What are the qualities? What are the characteristics? What do I really want? in a partner who's going to be someone that shares my values, wants to live the way that I'm living. At that time, I was actually one of the fitness classes I was teaching. I was teaching a yoga class and I was getting yoga journal, right? I know it sounds kind of corny, right? Guys that are watching this are like, you you are getting what? (laughs) That's right, yoga journal. I always said you were the only guy in a high security federal prison that could get other big burly convicts probably tattooed like face head to toe to pretzel into these yoga yoga. positions. Yeah, it's possible. Sorry, go ahead. Took a little while to to warm them up to it, but yes, there were plenty of converts to the yoga. But this yoga journal magazine, if you've ever seen it before, it's definitely geared towards women. And you know, not ironically, like I'm opening up the pages and I'm looking and I'm going, wow, I see these women in here, like I know that they're living, like these are the things that they are doing, they're living a certain way. I'm like, I wonder what they're like in person. Hmm. You know, I don't know these people, but man, if I could be with someone like this, what what would ideally, what would they be like if they're really into health and fitness and, and all the other things that I'm into at this time? So I start writing a comprehensive list. I write this long, long list and I just keep writing and writing. We're talking about pages. Just a brain dump? Pages, yes. Everything and anything. And I'm looking in the magazine and I'm looking everywhere for ideas. Whenever I'm inspired, write it down. Add it to the list. Add it to the list. And it got to the point where I had these slips of paper on the top of my locker. Because I had the pages, I folded those up. And I had these little slips of paper. And at the time I was booking, I was taking bets. For other guys, it's one of the things that we do in prison, right? It's a hustle, a side hustle. It's a hustle. Yeah. And so I have all these little slips of paper. Well, I start using these slips of paper every time I'm struck by, you know, some sort of inspiration, like, oh, that's a good one. Let me add that to the list. And I start stacking up these slips of paper on top of the list that I already have. Next thing you know, I have this whole thing set up on the top of my locker and I start looking at it every day. Every day I'm reviewing, I'm going through these lists of qualities, characteristics. And again, I was very intentional. I specifically did not include any physical characteristics. And you know what? I got to a point where I was all right with that. I said, if my ideal partner is living this certain way, they're healthy, they're active. The most important thing is that we're going to be able to do these things together. That was the important thing. It wasn't the appearance. Did you originally forget? Because my initial thought for everybody watching this is when you think of an ideal partner, most of us, the first thing would be like tall, dark, and handsome, or, you know, 36, 24, 36, whatever. That's probably like 36, 22, 48 nowadays, but you know what I mean. So did you intentionally from the beginning consciously not put that on there or did you forget and then it dawned on you later? I was very conscious about not putting it on there. And it was when I got towards, you know, I I had these exhaustive lists and and pieces of paper. And it was at that point where I said, you know what? I'm good. I don't need to include those things. I'm really, I'm just going to put it out there. I have an ideal in my mind. 
It's the characteristics that are most important, the characteristics and the values. The aesthetic part is going to be, it's, it's going to take care of itself. I'm confident in that. Wow. No worries. Right? So, yeah, I was kind of on a, like a, a spiritual thing at that point, and, I, and it resonated, and it felt good, and I really, I, you know, gave it up to, to God, to my higher power, and said, man, this is what I'm bringing into my life. And I'd like to say it happened the next day, but it didn't exactly work that way, but it was by constantly coming back to it every day, remembering, and most importantly, believing. So it became your vision board, basically. It was my daily, it, it was part of my daily routine. It was my vision. It was wow. my belief that it was going to happen. The crazy thing is when Ro finally came back into my life, remember, I'm not knowing what she's into. I didn't know that she went off to school for sports medicine, that she became a fitness competitor, that she's all into health and wellness. I don't know any of these things, right? That was, man, that was all part of the manifestation, right? And full disclosure here, when I was getting descriptions about, <laughs> about where she was physically, <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like, wow, <laughs> she might be bigger than me at this point. You know what I mean? China. Balked up. Like, I'm thinking like, yeah, China, Xena warrior, princess. Female I'm like, bodybuilder. I'm like, wow, she's a badass. She's a real badass. And, and I'm like, am I okay with this? Can my ego stand this? Did you think I was like this? <laughs> <laughs> you thought my voice would be deeper than yours? I didn't know. I didn't know what to expect. But, no, no, no. As we were talking, but I'm saying before our first visit. Yeah, I know. Remember, I hadn't seen any pictures. But in my mind, the entire time I'm going... She is every single thing on my list. Like, how is this possible? I was like, this is too good to be true. It can't possibly, it can't be this. I'm like, there's gotta be a catch here. There's always a catch, right? And I said, nope, just erase that thought from your mind. I literally, literally took the breath, let it go. The day before the visit, pictures come, I'm sitting there, a mail call, Moment of truth, right? She's coming the next day. And you know what I said? It doesn't even matter. You don't look at them? I did look. Oh. But before, oh. before I looked, I said, it doesn't even matter. I don't care. I don't care. At that point, and I'm going to admit this, like I was already in head over heels. I'm like, she is everything that I want. How could Except I have gotten lat spread. so <laughs> lucky? <laughs> And I will even deal with the lat spread if that's what it takes. You know what I mean? We're talking about a really wide muscular back. Large V-shape, big muscular arms. Hey, if, if that's what it is, that's what it is. I, I'm all in. And I opened up the envelope. I take out the pictures. And there she is. And it's the picture I always talk about. I don't know if you guys have seen this one where I'll put she's. It in the video if I can find it. She's got the American flag spread behind her right after she won okay. Miss Fitness New Jersey. And wow. Stunning. Yes, she was very, very in shape. She was not Xena Warrior, bulky princess. She was just absolutely stunning. And I sat there. Uh, Wow, I'm getting like emotional. Uh -huh. And I was just absolutely, I was stunned. I was amazed. And I was excited to go out there the next day and spend the day with her. And huh, we've never looked back. No, did you know 11 years later she'd have a big old belly? <laughs> mm, a beautiful belly. Love you. The one last thing that really, that brought all of this that manifested everything that I ever wanted in an ideal partner was the belief that it was possible in those moments where there was the self-doubt, the hesitation. I told you about stopping to take that breath. There's a part of us sometimes that like, uh, you know, we talk about uh, sabotaging our own success. If you can't let go of those limiting beliefs and genuinely believe that you deserve this sort of happiness, that you deserve this, this ideal partner, if you can't truly believe in that, 
it's not going to happen. That was the most challenging part mm. to let go of all my negative past and to allow myself to believe that I was worthy, that I was capable of having a relationship like this. And with that acceptance, with bro coming into my life, everything else became possible. But that's where it all started in, in manifesting our relationship. We are nothing special either. We are normal human beings. We are people just like you. We were going through a really tough time, just like most of you. All you have to do is put this into action. It is that easy. It's simple. It's not easy because you have to do the work. You have to focus on that every day. The hardest time in my life was right before Adam was awarded his release. And within those couple of months, because there were high highs and there were low lows, and I was on this god awful roller coaster for years. And I got to the point where I was like, it's all crap. I don't believe it anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. But what I had in front of me was my vision board, very similar to Adam's list. I had photos instead. I'm a very creative person. I do better with images. So whatever works for you. But I had that tool to look at in those moments of despair, in the times where I thought, it's not gonna happen for me, I'm done. I don't wanna be positive anymore. All I wanna do is sit here and sulk. Looked across the room and there were all my goals. And I focused on them and it pulled me out of it because it's right there for you. Just like when you get a brand new red car and all you see are red cars on the street. There are no more red cars on the street than there were yesterday, sorry. It's just the fact of now that's in the forefront of your mind and that's what you're focusing on. And that's what this list does for you. We're not special. We just put in the work and we did it. And you can do it too. So I would love to know, we would love to know in the comments below, if you're willing to share, what is on your list? What is your big goal for 2021, for this year, whenever you're watching this? And we'll help you, we'll work on it with you. We could all just go back and forth in the comments and inspire one another to focus on it, to revisit that daily, to believe it's gonna happen and to accept it when it comes. Anything else before we go? The only thing I'd like to say is just that this was number one. Yeah. This was the first time. It wasn't the last time. Everything else that's happened for us, being here, everything Getting we, out. Are, we enjoy now, like there's a whole series, a whole series of things that were manifest over. I mean, we're talking about the course of 11 years. Yeah. And um, a lot of times we got in our own way and we'll talk about that on another video because I'm kind of mm -hmm. making a left, but we got in our own way because we wanted to force how we thought it should happen or what we thought was the only way that the things that we thought we needed to get in order to take the next step, which for so many years was Adam being released. And he says all the time now when he's giving lectures to little kids or people who are just out of prison and returning into society, I'm not supposed to be here. We moved a mountain, the mountain that existed between us, we always said, because he lived on one side of this enormous out mountain, six hours away, I lived on the other side of the mountain. If we were able to do that, you guys can do it too. I think we should stop there because it's kind of getting Let's long. stop there, but the next time, let's give them some of the examples of how we made mistakes. Yeah. And blocked ourselves. Absolutely. From Ouch. manifesting what we really wanted. And looking back, we're like, oh, that hurt. I we don't be want having this baby at 34 instead of. 42 yeah and we don't want to see you make the same mistakes exactly so. we love you guys thank you so much for being here with us let us know in the comments what you think if you want more law of attraction videos i think that one's going to be great just so you can learn from our mistakes and you don't have to waste that time and you can get things a little bit more easily and more quickly hopefully if that's what's meant for you we love you guys and we'll see you in the next one Bye -bye.